Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? I am so thrilled to be in this space with you today to come into the presence of each other, to find a space that is welcoming and loving and peaceful and hopeful. I hope we find that here today. If you're new here, my name is Josh Rumpel. I am the director of youth and pastoral care here. And I'm so thankful that you are with us today. Uh, Pastor Leanne is out today. She is recovering from surgery. She's recovering well, and she appreciates all of the love and support and prayers that you've already offered and will continue to offer. She'll be out this week and next week as she's recovering from surgery, um, but then she'll return to us in two weeks. Uh, there's a few more announcements. I'm going to invite Stephanie is a Geary up today. Uh, she is our forum speaker for following this service. And so she's going to give a little bit of uh, information. As, go ahead and come on up, Stephanie, uh, as far as what's happening following the service. Well, first, thank you, everyone, for the invitation. Um, my name is Stephanie is Geary. I am an immigration attorney here in Colorado Springs. And I'm going to be talking about immigration, all, all issues related to immigration after church today at the forum. Um, by way of quick preview, anyone who's coming, I'd like you to ask to think, to start, I'd like to ask you to start thinking about what questions you might have for me. I do have a talk prepared, but I want to make sure that I answer all your questions. So go ahead and think about that, and I will see you all after the service. Thank you, Stephanie. Immigration is a, it's a hot topic. So I'm looking forward to you being here. Back to the mic <laughs> for our people online. Be great. One of the things I love about this church, even though I'm not a regular attender, is I see this as a very pro-immigrant community. And that's one of the things that I, I really love. And so um, while I talk to friendly, not so friendly audiences all the time, um, I'm really happy to talk to you guys about something that I know that you all care a lot about. So thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. So be friendly and be curious. Um, a couple more announcements. Starting in a couple of weeks is our next new members class. We're meeting on Tuesday nights, April 30th, and then May something. I think it's May 5th. I'm blanking on the calendar, but it's the following Tuesday from 6 to 7. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a new member and joining this beautiful and loving community, email me at josh at fcucc.org, or you can find my email on the very back page of the bulletin, and I will get you equipped. You're going to be spending those couple of hours with me, uh, getting to know the church, getting to know each other uh, as we get to know this community better. And one final announcement, there is a service planned for tomorrow afternoon from 12 to 1. It is a joint service. It's an interfaith service, uh, partially led by the sisters at Bennett Hill um, that I got to spend a couple hours with on Thursday um, as we got to plan tomorrow's service. It is uh, in regards to calling for a ceasefire and to pray and to really repent and know and acknowledge our complicity in the violence in the world that is happening not just in Israel and Palestine, but all across the world. And so we are going to be advocates for peace and for justice. So please join us in a very contemplative service tomorrow from 12 to 1. I believe that's the end of my announcements. If I forgot something, my bad. If I remember it, I'll try to bring it up later. Uh, we'll close this welcome by saying, I am so glad you're here. Uh, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome.
Please stand and body your spirit and join me in the call to worship. Welcome, beloved friends, as we enter with open hearts. The shepherd calls us by name, leading us to green pastures. The shepherd beckons us to an abundant life. And may the peace of the shepherd be with you. Let us greet one another with peace. All right, I would like to invite any children who are in worship with us today to please join me on the chancel for the children's message. today it is shorts weather that makes me happy I love it when it's shorts weather <gasps> what's the biggest thing you've ever seen think about it for just a second hmm. and now I'm gonna modify that question what's the biggest thing you've ever seen in person so it has to be like with you know up close or maybe from a distance but not in a picture Mm, does anyone want to share what's the biggest thing you've ever seen in person? Yeah. What is it? T-Mobile Park. T-Mobile Park. Okay. Where's that? Oh, Seattle. In Seattle. Okay. So a very large stadium. Yeah. What's the biggest thing? Oh, the sky. Yeah, with all the clouds. I mean, it's pretty massive. I'm, I'm with you. Anyone else want to share? Yeah. Oh, the sun is really big, right? When, you, when we got to see the eclipse last week. It is way bigger than the earth. Yeah, what have you seen? Texas. Texas. Yeah. <laughs> You're so right, though, because it's a really, really big state, isn't it? And you saw it. Okay, we've got some really good answers here. Any other shares? Yeah. Yeah. It takes a while to get through, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm kind of getting at, we've got these really grand things in life. Like I was kind of thinking of big sunsets, or I was thinking of, like, have you been to a really big canyon? Some of you have visited the Grand Canyon maybe, or big mountains. They're so vast, they just make you feel so small. Um, but I also want to think today about how really tiny things can be beautiful too. And I want to show you something I brought just for you guys to look at today. We might have to pass this, but do you all know what this is? Take a close look. Oh, it's coral. Would you like to pass it just so everyone can like have a little feel? I'm keeping it in a basket because it's a little sharp. It is non-edible um, <laughs> for... <laughs> what is coral? This water stuff. Coral is 
It used to be living. It comes from the ocean. Coral, if you look up close, there's just this delicate pattern. In fact, I'm going to let these guys see it for a second. And we have a magnifying glass because if you look up close, there's this really beautiful pattern. Do you guys want to share that magnifier? And there is the most intricate pattern in this teeny tiny <coughs> pattern. Yeah. And it kind of hold the magnifier up a little bit. Okay. I want to mention here, can you hold this one while maybe he looks and we can pass it? One more person. Um, these little things in nature can be so beautiful. Can any of you think of something tiny that was very beautiful? Hmm. I know coral is an easy answer. I'm thinking, have you ever looked at a grain of sand up close? No. And the grain of sand, okay, if you look at what you're seeing, I mean, it's a teeny rock, and every single piece of sand is going to have a different look, and they might be different colors. Yeah, what were you thinking of? Ladybugs. Ladybugs. Those are so beautiful. Um, let's, did you want to get a chance to look at it? Yeah. Oh, hand. Sorry about that. Yeah. One other, op yeah. A butterfly. Butterfly, yeah. And often butterflies, when they're moving, it's really hard to get a good look at them. Um, but sometimes it, people will take a magnifying glass and look at a ladybug wing, and they are so beautiful up close. Um, we could probably all think of more tiny things that are beautiful, but I want us to think about how there's all this power in the earth and nature and all this energy. And at the same time, there's a lot of power and energy in this tiny thing. Things like sand that were made out of water, made from wind, made from possibly rivers pounding those rocks. Would you like to look with a magnifying? We can just pass it down. And it's like in the sandbox. Yeah. So I want to just remember today, it's just a reminder for all of us that these really big things in the world are beautiful and so can tiny things. Even tiny acts of kindness, when we show love, when we share Christ's peace by maybe sharing a smile or a gentle word, these small acts can be just as beautiful as really grand, big gestures. So let's, um, we're going to say a quick prayer, and I want everyone just to be thinking about that as we practice our small acts of kindness. Would you all do, uh, repeat after me for our prayer? Dear God, thank you for the loveliness of spring. Thank you for the mountains, as well as the little blades of grass. Give us eyes to notice the beauty in creation and the intention to spread kindness one act at a time. Amen. So you are all invited to follow me if you'd like to join me for kids community worship. And if you come with me, I will return you guys back here to the sanctuary before the end of worship. But you also can remain in the in worship service and stay with your families. Thank you.
Hello again, father, mother, son, daughter, and spirit that lives within our hearts and continues to hover in this world. I confess that it seems like our greatest efforts and our greatest hearts often can lead to conflicts. Not only within communities, but also in our country as well as in the world. And oh, how we need something more than our best intention. Even our greatest minds come up with wonderful, wonderful inventions that seem that seem to eventually erode the very life forces that are in this earth that you've created for us to live on. So it's in this time of great confusion and the tremendous, tremendous need of discernment that we echo the words of the wise men of Proverbs that says, trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own best intentions, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths smooth. May this be so in our lives today and every day. We know it's not a quick decision. We know our lives are built on solid, wonderful, godly habits. And may that be true in our lives. And we add one more ask today, and that is that you will teach us daily how to live out the words you taught your disciples so very long ago when you said, our creator in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. When have you felt most alive? Perhaps it's a particular moment that comes to mind. For myself, I can name a plethora of moments that made me feel an abundance of life. Watching Rachel walk down the aisle on our wedding day, holding my son for the very first time, witnessing a total solar eclipse just six days ago, the first and really every time I heard this organ played, when I laugh, cry, and share with, with others. When I had a Bavarian cream donut in the Bavarian region of Germany for the very first time, <laughs> my God. I could name so many more moments, but I, but I think you get the, the picture. Those moments of, of feeling the abundance of life are not just for the moments of pure joy or ecstasy or happiness. I've also felt fully alive at a funeral, grieving with loved ones, grateful for the life that I have and the time shared with the person who passed away. I felt fully alive when letting anger fill my bones amidst the protest, crying out for justice and peace. I have felt fully alive when stripping away the theology that no longer fit me, grieving the loss of what was, of my community, because I found something new, something that I found was closer to the truth. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that I, not my, I came that I, that they may have life and have it abundantly. So what is the abundant life? What does that even mean? I've wrestled with that question over the last few weeks as I have noodled the subject of this sermon in my brain. Let me tell you, I don't have an answer. Or at least I don't have a definitive one. Perhaps there really isn't an answer for this. Maybe we'll arrive at it today. Maybe we won't. We'll see. Let's go back to the passage again. I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheep folds by the gates, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. There are those in the world that are thieves and bandits. There's an ideology, a system that wants to steal and kill and destroy, and it goes by many names. It is legion. It is empire. It is Caesar. It is white supremacy. It is homophobia, it is transphobia, it is xenophobia. It is a million different things that seek to belittle, harm, or even eradicate the lives of those who live on the earth. These thieves and bandits masquerade as things that we can trust and believe in, calling out to us with a voice so sweet and endearing. They whisper things like, I love you. I want the best for you. I want to keep you safe. I want to restore you to greatness. All the while robbing you and leading you astray and away from the shepherd. The thieves and, and bandits want to steal everything from you. Your dignity, your, your beauty, your hope, your dreams, your very self. 
They want to kill and destroy the life that the shepherd leads us into. Back to the scripture. The one who enters by the gates is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the, the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. When we attune ourselves to the shepherd's voice, then we need not be afraid of following the thief. We become able to distinguish between the voices of the thief and the voices of the shepherd. No matter how crafty that thief is, we will not follow the stranger, but instead we will run from them. Many of us are here today because we want to know more closely the voice of the shepherd. We are sheep listening for the voice and watching for the one who comes through the gates, wary of the one climbing over the walls. We are here today because we seek to know and find the abundant life that the shepherd wants us to have. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. There is a, a system in the world that seeks to drown out the voice of the shepherd, lulling us into a slumber with the whispers of deceit. I came from that system. I know it intimately. That system resides all around us in every corner of the globe. I have tasted the fruits of its tree and I have found it to be poisonous. I've also tasted the tree, of the, the, the fruit of the tree of the abundant life. And I have found its fruit to be sweet and filling. I've heard the voice of the shepherd calling out to me, beckoning me into a life filled with a radical love for every one of my neighbors, including my enemies. The shepherd calls us into a life not bound by the constraints of our differences, but by the radical inclusion of our diversity. We can seek to, to build a life with selfish intentions, to build up walls to protect what we consider our own. We can run and pursue much of the world's pleasures, becoming distracted by the vanities of life. We can equip ourselves with the weapons of this world so, we, so that we can feel safe to keep our treasures that we hold so dear. We can turn inwards and forsake the beauty of a blessed community. But I think we know that the shepherd calls us into something more, something together. Selfish gain is inherently contradictory to the call of love. Oscar Romero, who was an archbishop in the Catholic Church in El Salvador, who was assassinated in 1980 because of his revolutionary preaching, once said, the present form of the world passes away, and there remains only the joy of having used this world to establish God's rule here. All pomp, all triumphs, all selfish capitalism, all the false successes of life will pass with the world's form. All of that passes away. What does not pass away is love. When one has turned money, property, work in one's calling into the service of others, then the joy of sharing and the feeling that all are one's family does not pass away. In the evening of life, you will be judged on love. I asked earlier, when have you felt most alive? Has it been when you have been selfish? Has it been when you have hated? Has it been when you have excluded? My guess is no. Perhaps you have felt most alive when you have loved deeply, when you have transcended the ego and found connection to the wider human community and even the earth itself. When you have served others, when you have shared with others, 
My guess is yes. The shepherd is calling us into this kind of abundant life, leading us into connection with the divine, with each other, and the world. So we have to ask ourselves the question, whose voice are we listening to? What is the fruits of our action? Is it greater connection or is it greater disconnection? Is love our guiding force with the words and actions that we are choosing? The abundant life is ours to have. It's ours to share. Do you want it? Or have you been convinced by the voice of the thief and bandits? I dream of a world where all may have that abundant life together. And I, I hope you do too. Amen. The life and work of this church has been, is, and will be sustained by you, the congregation. It is through the gifts of your time, your money, and your very selves that this has been a place of refuge and hope for so many. At this time of offering, we understand that money is a burden for many. If this is the case for you, please do not feel any pressure to give. 
But if you are able, we ask that you give as you can in order for the work of this church to continue. Ushers, you may come forward. My friends, let us pray. O oh, shepherd who leads us in the way, bless what and who we have received today. May they be used for the good of this church, of this community, 
and of this world. Amen. My friends, I am so glad you are here today. Thank you to the Flu Choir who has done some work today. Come on, Flu Choir. They've got one more thing for us, so hold on to that. Thank you, Sandy, for being here today. We are partners in crime consistently. Thank you. And Alina, thank you, Polly, for offering such beautiful words today. And thank to each and every one of you for being in this space. We live in a beautiful community that is loving and peaceful because of you. So thank you for making that happen. Following the service, if you would like prayer or to simply connect with the church, one of our student ministers, John Ween, is here with us today. He'll be up front. So find John for prayer and for comfort. Uh, and as we leave today, please go with the knowledge that you are 
not alone, that we are in this together, and grace and peace can follow you every step of the way.